We're live in Boston's North End. Yes, we're on a boat. We got Easty in the background on the Boston Harbor. You guys can check out our journey here in the North End on Instagram. And make sure to toss a follow to BHW Rentals to get your Airbnb stay right here in Boston. We're jumping in with my solo mock draft. My first solo one of the season and my last entire mock draft that I will be sharing with you guys. What better place to share this with y'all than the Boston Harbor with Easty in the background? Come on. Number one overall, let's get right to it. The Chicago Bears will be selecting Caleb Williams. No funny business on the pick. They take the entire 15 minutes, sadly, even though we're really excited for the draft. But it builds up the suspense and really gets us questioning what's going to happen with the number two overall pick. We heard a lot of controversy with Jaden Daniels this week from his agent, from his camp, what his thoughts were about the entire draft. I don't really know how to feel about this. I don't think this is something that we should really read too much on. But I feel like with Washington selecting number two overall, they really want to solidify a guy that... They want to be part of their organization. They have new ownership, new front office. I really do feel like they're going to go in the direction that they feel like is going to be most welcoming and adaptable. I thought the Marcus Mariota signing was, you know, to insinuate added Jaden Daniels transition. I also feel like the commander is going to want a prospect that wants to be in Washington. This gets us to the New England Patriots at three with Jaden Daniels on the board. It can still give them a top quarterback in this class. But I do feel like with the if the Patriots select a quarterback here, that they'll be settling for the third guy at the position. And I do feel like this is a scenario they'll likely try and trade out to get more capital and just better surround their team going forward. But that doesn't happen here. The Patriots stay here at three. They select the best player in the draft. Marvin Harrison Jr. goes here to the Patriots. I feel like from a lot of Patriots fans, this is the move that they kind of want to go to. You don't want to get the guy you have to settle for at the quarterback position. You get the best player that's a non-quarterback in the entire draft. And this is a position in need. I think Jacoby Brissett is a guy that can really play through this year and could potentially allow the Patriots to draft a quarterback at another point in time. Next year, maybe they make a trade. Maybe there's a free agent guy that they want to go for. At four, the Arizona Cardinals. With Jaden Daniels still on the board, the Arizona Cardinals are going to trade with the New York Giants. Not a move that I want. But I feel like with the draft working out this way, this is the only way to do it. The Giants move from six to four. I'm going to share the compensation with you right now. Arizona Cardinals gave up the number four overall pick. In the 90th pick overall, a third round pick for the Giants six, number 70 overall. So that's a 70 for 90 pick swap still in the third round. And then they get the 107th pick, a fourth round pick from the New York Giants. This allows the Cardinals to still select in the top six. And even though the Giants did their homework on the quarterback position, they could have very easily selected a wide receiver, chose not to, knowing that Jaden Daniels was the guy available here, and they go and get their quarterback. It's an awkward scenario with Daniel Jones likely going to be the guy competing with Drew Locke to start, but at least Brian Dable and Joe Shane get their quarterback of the future as part of their tenure here in the coaching and general manager position. And the Giants' future of the franchise is solidified while they just kind of go through the kinks and get through the last year on Daniel Jones' contract before they get out of this scenario. At five with the Chargers, there's been a lot of conversation to pot- for teams to potentially move up for J.J. McCarthy. We saw that the Cardinals just moved back to six. I actually think that there's a lot of consideration for the Chargers to go offensive tackle here. I really do. I think that Jim Harbaugh is looking to reset that franchise. They saw that Justin Herbert was a guy that was banged up last year and they weren't able to do anything without a guy like that. But I don't think that that's the direction that they go in, if you want me to be honest. I think it's real easy. It's an offensive tackle heavy draft. There's a lot of plays that they can get a little bit later on. At five overall, they're able to get the best defender on the board. Dallas Turner goes here to the Chargers. 
I don't think that Joey Bosa is a guy that's going to be there long term. They just restructured Khalil Mack's contract. They've invested in the secondary and first rounds and prior drafts. Go and get yourself a future pass rusher that's going to be there to grow with Justin Herbert. In that division, all these teams have competitive defenses, and they're going against Patrick Mahomes, so I feel like you have to have a solid pass rush to knock down the Super Bowl champ. Dallas turning a first defender off the board at five to the San Diego Chargers. Going to run through the top five really quickly before we move on to the six with the Arizona Cardinals. Caleb Williams was the first overall pick. Drake May second overall to Washington. Marvin Harrison at three to the New England Patriots. I think that's a large part of the Patriots trying to get big name players. They want to sell jerseys. They want to sell tickets. They want to bring some hype back around the Patriots. For Jaden Daniels with the Giants trading up the Arizona Cardinals at five. Dallas Turner going for the LA Chargers. Six overall for the Arizona Cardinals. Malik Neighbors, the best wide receiver on the board, goes here for the Giants. I think they could have stood home at four and drafted Marvin Harrison. That's not the case here. They still get a really good wide receiver. They're able to get more capital on the back end of the draft. The thing with me, and I was a little hesitant to make Arizona do this trade, I think this is more, you know, just moving down two picks and, and being able to get a little bit more capital. The Cardinals have three picks inside the top 35. There's plenty of opportunity for them to improve their roster. I know that they have a lot of holes, but there should be a lot of good young players in Arizona over the next couple years for that team to turn it around in the West. And while the 49ers are competing for Super Bowls right now, you see the Rams and the Seahawks making strong pushes to really compete in that division. I feel like this lets Arizona grow for the future a little bit more. Malik Neighbors here at six for the Cardinals. Seven. There's been a lot of talk for the Tennessee Titans to draft an offensive tackle, a position in need. Last year, they drafted Peter Skaronsky. You invest in Calvin Ridley. You draft Will Levis last year. I think it makes sense for them to go offensive tackle. But I feel like the biggest hole of kryptonite for the Titans has been able to stop offenses from having three, 400 yards all over on them. I think a position in need goes here. The first cornerback off the board, Terion Arnold. I think there's a lot of conversation about this being Quinion Mitchell. But realistically, Terion Arnold goes here for the Titans. They get a top cornerback from Alabama. And they make impact on both sides of the ball this offseason for that team to grow in the post-Mike Vrabel era. I think another important reason why Terion Arnold goes here is because if he doesn't go at 7 for the Titans, realistically, this can be a selection where the Falcons select him at 8. Because Arnold went at 7, the Falcons are actually making a trade here at 8 with the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings are not playing games. We know that they've been in the quarterback market throughout this entire process. They're going to move up a couple of picks to get J.J. McCarthy. With this scenario, they leapfrog the Denver Broncos. They go and get their quarterback of the future. Justin Jefferson doesn't have the questions that he continues to have. You build around Addison, Hawkinson, you bring in Aaron Jones. With a young quarterback like that in a successful season, there's a realistic chance that they can make some serious damage year one, even with competitive teams in that division. The Packers are an up-and-coming team. The Lions made the NFC Championship last year, and obviously the Bears are going to be a new-look organization drafting Caleb Williams. The compensation for the Falcons and the Vikings. The Falcons give up the number 8 overall pick. They move down 3 to pick number 11. In return, they also get a 4th round pick, pick number 129. They get a 5th round pick, 167. And they get a 20, 25 third round pick. The Falcons attach pick number 143. That makes that 167, 143 a little bit more of a pick swap. The reason why I think the capital is so much because we have to keep in mind the Broncos can make a same offer to go and get their quarterback. And this is not a scenario to trade for a guy inside, you know, the top six. It's a little bit later, so it's less compensation, but to still leapfrog that team in a bidding battle, I feel like that's why the Vikings make the move. And knowing that they get to keep their pick at number 23, overall or do they you'll find out later they're more willing to make this decision giving up a 25 third round pick rather than a first round pick for next year they still get their guy they still have another first round pick feel like this is a win-win scenario and the falcons move down knowing that the guy that they wanted to select terry on arnold 
wasn't available. They still get to pick a couple picks later. J.J. McCarthy for the Vikings at eight. At nine, the Chicago Bears already locked up Caleb Williams. There's a lot of controversy. This could be Romo Dunze. This could be an offensive tackle that can help solidify the future of the Bears offense for years to come. None of that's the case. They cannot neglect the defensive side of the ball. You send a second round pick and a fifth round pick for Montez Sweat last year. You add to that. You get Byron Murphy here, one of the best defensive Defensive lineman in the entire draft. I think that this is a guy that can really be considered as the top defender off the board here. But with the Bears, this is a position in need. You get to balance out. I think the selection for the Texans last year, seeing the impact that that made across the entire team, is extremely important to be, you know, replicated. And that's part of the process of having that year one impact. You know, with the Texans, we got C.J. Stroud and Will Will Anderson. Now the Bears, the next year, get to get Caleb Williams. They get to get Byron Murphy rounding out the top 10, staying home. Even though I do feel like this is a selection where they would consider taking some trade calls, Byron Murphy and Caleb Williams is a great pairing in the top 10. And this really does improve the Chicago Bears as a whole in round one with their first two selections, allowing them to be serious contenders inside the NFC North, who we've talked about in recent podcast episodes as one of the most competitive divisions in football in just a two-year transition. Keep that in mind. Byron Murphy here at nine for the Chicago Bears. At 10, the last pick in the first round, do the New York Jets go Brock Bowers? Do the New York Jets go wide receiver with Romo Dunze? They do neither of that. They go Joe Alt, offensive tackle. I know it's really crazy to see the first offensive tackle go off the board at pick 10. I just feel like for these first nine teams, even though some of these teams are double dipping, that the offensive tackle position is so deep in this year's draft class that instead of making that push to really really stretch and get those guys early you could still get quality offensive tackles in round two in this draft so there's no panic on offensive line Joe Alt goes here at 10 the Jets have no excuse they got offensive linemen in free agency they draft offensive linemen you got Garrett Wilson you got Brees Hall you keep Aaron Rodgers on his feet this is the best way to continue to grow to contend and to be a legitimate threat to win the AFC East this year. My 6-10, to 10, Malik Neighbors going to the Cardinals at 6, Terion Arnold to the Titans at 7, J.J. McCarthy to the Vikings at 8, Byron Murphy at 9 to the Chicago Bears, and at 10, Joe Alts to the New York Jets rounding out the first round. Pick number 11, jumping right in. This is the pick the Falcons received for the Vikings trade where they swapped at eight. The Falcons are still able to select a top corner. Quinion Mitchell goes number 11. Pair him up with A.J. Terrell. He could still shadow the number one wide receiver on opposing offenses. Allows this team to get depth on the defensive side. You got Grady Jarrett up front. J.C. Bates added great play for the secondary on the back end. You invested in Kirk Cousins in the offseason, already having a solidified offensive line. You have to let Kyle Pitts have a role. I think Brock Bowers could have been one of the better available players, but... I just don't understand overshadowing Kyle Pitts in this selection. You have to let Drake London continue to grow in his role as well. The Falcons select Quinion Mitchell, who was arguably the best corner here on the draft. At 12, the Broncos don't get their quarterback yet. Bo Nix and Michael Penix are still available, but this isn't the selection for them. They go tight end Brock Bowers, who just simply is the best player available here. I know Romo Dunze is a guy that can they can heavily consider, but I just think Brock Bowers is viewed as, as a better overall player. Can really impact that passing game just as much as Romo Dunze can. You can line him up. We know what Sean Payton did with Jimmy Graham when he had a successful tight end in New Orleans. This is the direction that they go. They ride out Jared Stidham a little bit. Maybe they can get Bo Nix and they can compete for that guy in a round two or a little bit later selection. 13, the Raiders do not panic. They do not get their quarterback yet but they are going to potentially move up you're just going to have to find out for the later part in the draft at 13 overall they select nate wiggins corner out of clemson this is a really good corner you see the corner run go off the board early some of the top defenders in the class this is a position in need for the raiders 
Look, I, I think that they could go a lot of different directions. Offensive line with Romo Dunze falling. If you had a wide receiving core of Devontae Adams, Jacoby Myers, and Romo Dunze, I think that that would be a great core. But Nate Wiggins addresses a position need, allows them to get better. They add Christian Wilkins. Spillane is a guy that continues to evolve in a role. And we already know that Max Crosby is a guy in the defensive player of the year conversation. Moving to 14, the Saints, it's really tough. I feel like this is a position that could be moved because of all the talent that's still on the board. But the Saints really need to make a selection here. A lot of injury problems going on with Ryan Ramchek on the right side of that offensive line. I, I think that they need help all around on both sides of the ball. But Talese Fuaga can play a number of different positions on the offensive line. You help keep Derek Carr upright for a little bit longer. You have Alvin Kamara, who's a, a running back that's going to continue to demand a bunch of volume. Chris Olave is going to grow in that offense. And I just think you need to bolster that offensive line before you try and invest in the quarterback position or you continue to try and solidify that defense. Talese Fuaga here at 14. With 15 with the Colts. This is a perfect scenario for the Colts. Lou, I hope you really like this selection. Romo Dunze goes here. This is a team that is looking at the wide receiver position. I think that they could address that a little bit later in the draft, but realistically, with the value that they get here at 15 with Romo Dunze, this is a position that they cannot pass up. I think they're going to be getting phone calls left and right. Why is Romo Dunze falling to 15? This dude's a top guy. He could have went top seven in the draft. He could have, but let's realistically think. Offensive tackles have to get selected. Defenders have to get selected. Four quarterbacks have already went in this draft. With that all being the case... A wide receiver position falls a little bit deeper than where you would have wanted to, but I think it makes sense. Romo Dunze goes in with Michael Pittman, makes a lot of great help for them in year one at pick 15. From 11 to 15, the Falcons select Quinion Mitchell. The Broncos select Brock Bowers. The Raiders select Nate Wiggins. The Saints select Talese Fuaga. And the Colts get Romo Dunze. Moving to 16, the Seattle Seahawks are drafting Jared Verse, getting a room full of pass rushes for that defense. They already got the secondary help. They could really go offensive line here, but I just think that they've continued to address that position for quite some time now. Don't think it's a direction that they need to go in. With the Jared Verse pick, you add depth. You got Draymond Jones, you got Leonard Williams, and a number of early round picks that you've been selecting. You go and get Jared versus a guy that can get you 10 sacks in a season if you want to compete in that division in the NFC West. This is a great way to continue to do that. At 17, the Jacksonville Jaguars have a lot of different directions that they can go in as well. I do think that the best player on the board for them is Fashanu. He's a guy that can play the right side, the left side of the line, the youngest offensive tackle prospect in the draft. He could play guard. I don't think that they need him to. What I will say is the Jaguars do have a pretty solid offensive line, but with the injuries that they had last year, all across the offensive side, the quarterback, the running back, the wide receivers, this is a draft selection that allows to continue to to grow, to continue to develop, and make noise for the top of that division. You saw the Texans made move. The Colts just drafted Romo Dunze. The Titans been active in the offseason getting Legarius Sneed and going to get Calvin Ridley. This is a move that the Jaguars have to make to make sure their star players are in scenarios for success for the future of the franchise. 18, the Cincinnati Bengals are in a very similar scenario. Last year, we saw Joe Burrow get banged up. Jamar Chase missed some games last year. They franchise tag T. Higgins. This is a team that still wants to make a push to contend. But realistically, they, they might not even be the best team in their division. I feel like that's all part of a serious conversation. I know through free agency that this is a team that has addressed this position, but I'm going offensive tackle. I know that they missed on Jonah Williams, but they're not going to miss with this pick in an Alabama offensive tackle. Going to get... J.C. Latham, who is viewed as, as one of the top tackles in the draft, can play the right side, can play the left side. I know you got Orlando Brown there. I know you got a couple of the guys that they had signed through free agency, but I think this allows Joe Burrow to stay upright on his feet and for the Bengals to compete for some years to come. J.C. Latham for the Bengals. 19, this is the Rams selection, but we have a trade with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I know that the Rams haven't had a first-round pick in quite some time. They will be making a selection in the first round, just moving back a little bit, getting some more capital because some of the guys that they were looking for at this position weren't on the board. They liked the value, liked the extra capital. 
The trade is with the Bucks. The compensation is a smooth, small trade. The Rams get the 26th pick, moving back seven selections in the 92nd overall pick. A third round pick. The Bucks move up. Of course, Todd Bowles is going to select a defender. Lai Latu, the defensive end, viewed as one of the better pass rushers in the entire class. You invest in Baker Mayfield on the offense. You re-sign Mike Williams. How do you continue to grow? You balance that out. You put Latu next to Vita Vea on the defensive side. Levante David, Antoine Winfield. And you continue to grow this team in a balanced perspective. Todd Bowles loves the defensive side of the ball. Obviously a defensive-minded coach. They go and get one of the better guys. And you continue to compete in that division while the Falcons are the favorite, while the Saints are growing, and while the Carolina Panthers aren't viewed as a legitimate threat. At 20 for the Pittsburgh Steelers, they get an offensive tackle. Last year, they went in the direction of Broderick Jones. They continued this year after bringing in Arthur Smith, Cordell Patterson, They're looking to continue to grow that offense. Russell Wilson and Justin Fields as quarterbacks now instead of Kenny Pickett, who's now with Philadelphia. The Steelers go and get Tyler Guyton. There's a lot of offensive directions that they could have gone here, but I think Guyton's a guy you could put on the right side or the left side if you wanted to really push Broderick Jones. But I feel like he has quick footwork. I feel like he's a really powerful dude. He has great hands. I think that's what the Pittsburgh Steelers need to allow Najee Harris to grow, to give George Pickens that extra time to catch balls, be a dynamic wide receiver. I feel like all of that is for the betterment of the Pittsburgh Steelers, a direction that Arthur Smith would like to address. 16 to 20, we have Jared Verse going to the Seahawks. Fashanu going to the Jaguars, J.C. Latham to the Bengals, Latu to the Bucks in a trade with the Rams, and Tyler Guyton to the Steelers. In a run for the offensive tackles, after not seeing one selected in the first nine picks, we see five of them go from 10 to 20, really quickly impacting the draft. We're on our last 12 selections. We still have a bunch of trades. Really excited to give you guys the mock rundown. Go and check out our draft bold predictions when you're done watching the mock draft to see what we think is going to impact the first round and have great implications the first night to make the NFL start the year extremely exciting. 21 overall, the Dolphins could go interior offensive line but they go and get a defensive edge rusher. Darius Robinson has been climbing up draft boards, has been talked about on the back end of this first round. I feel like Latu or Verse would have gone in this pick, but with them both not being available and Van Ginkle is out, Christian Wilkins is out, the Dolphins cannot neglect the defensive side of the ball. They go and get Robinson, who is going to be paired up with Jalen Phillips. You, you got Bradley Chubb. That's a pass rush that is very young, very dominant, and can make some impact to allow the offense to continue to put up points the way that they did last year. The Eagles selecting at 22. I feel like the Eagles always get great values in their draft. Defensive back, cornerback, however you want to categorize them in the NFL. Cooper DeGene, I feel like the Eagles always get players like this that just kind of fall that are looked at as great prospects and the Eagles get right back into a contending scenario this year with Saquon Bakui even after losing guys like Fletcher Cox and Jason Kelsey. 23 overall this is the Viking selection but we have a trade. We just saw that Stephon Diggs went from the Buffalo Bills to the Houston Texans. That second round pick is not involved in this trade but the Bills move up from 28 to 23 because Brian Thomas is still on the board the best wide receiver available a position in need for the Bills in a stretch where the Cowboys could go Brian Thomas. The Rams are still selecting. I know they have two good wide receivers, but Sean McVay could be looking to make a splash on the offensive side of the ball. Brian Thomas is a great wide receiver here. The Bills get a number one that they can put in with Shakir, Kincaid, Curtis Samuel, and that offense does not skip a beat. The compensation for the trade is the Vikings give up the 23rd overall pick for 28, moving down five selections. On top of that, they get a fourth round pick, then 133rd pick, and a fifth round pick, 160th overall. Really get to compensate the middle rounds who I feel where I feel like they really lack some selections. A 
able to move around. They get a quarterback. They get a wide receiver. The Bills get their guy. They get extra capital. This works out for everybody. Brian Thomas to the Bills at 23 with a trade with the Minnesota Vikings. 24 overall, I really do feel like the Dallas Cowboys would have selected Brian Thomas. Not able to happen. The Cowboys select Troy Fatanu. They just lost Tyron Smith, who has been a left tackle for them for some time. Tyler Smith will slide over to that left tackle position. Fatanu can slide and he can be a guard on the left side opposite of Zach Martin. Or he can go and be their right tackle next year, plug and play. I feel like the Cowboys have to continue to rebuild that offensive line, reestablish the ground game, keep Dak upright on his feet, and allow CD and that wide receiver core to really cook and their defense to get healthy and make some plays to try and be on top of the NFC East once again. 25, the Packers also addressing a position in need, but an offensive tackle I feel like they really need to address. Amarius Mims here from Georgia going into the Packers who just lost Bakhtiari. You want to make sure you keep a young quarterback like Jordan Love up on his feet. They have plenty wide receivers. You just signed Josh Jacobs. You make a splash bringing over Xavier McKinney on the defensive side of the ball. Make a boring pick Get an offensive tackle. This will help out your team stay competitive for quite some time. 26, this is where the Rams get their pick back from the Bucks. They draft Graham Barton, offensive tackle from Duke, but this is a guy that's expected to play on the inside of the line. This is a selection they compare across from Steve Avila at the guard position, continue to grow to let Matthew Stafford stay up and get some of the better years on the back end of his career. Kyron Williams can continue to be a solid running back. And Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup can continue to have their role as one of the best wide receiver duos, if not the best, in the entire NFL. 27, the Cardinals have their second pick. I feel like one of the better players on the board is Enos Rakestraw at the cornerback position. They get this guy knowing that they adjust multiple holes in the draft. They pick eight picks later at 35. So I feel like if they, they like somebody differently, they have the opportunity to move around. But when you already got Malik Neighbors, you address the offensive side. Now you get a cornerback, you address the defensive side, and then you can use the rest of the picks to really balance out your team knowing that you got some later capital capital with the trade that you made earlier 28 overall this is where the vikings finish up their first round after their trade with the bills you got your guy in jj mccarthy who they moved up for you want to solidify and make sure that he has all the tools to be successful already has a bunch of weapons so what do you do you get him an offensive lineman jackson powers johnson you insert him at the guard or center position in the middle of your offensive line you run the ball successfully you keep your quarterback upright and you get great players at the position you select them. 29, the Lions stay home. Last year, they made some picks, and everybody thought they reached. It worked out really well for the Lions. They select linebacker Edger and Cooper, who they pair with Jack Campbell, who they selected in the first round last year, solidifying that defense, which they address in free agency. They already have a good offense that I feel like they don't need to touch. You get the best linebacker in the class in Edger and Cooper. This really allows the Lions to get well-rounded and continue Continue to be a threat in the NFC. Three more picks in the draft. It's going to get real exciting for these last three. With the Ravens selecting 30 overall, we know the Alabama connections there. Kool-Aid McKintry is a guy that can very much be selected, but I have them addressing the front seven. You go and get Edge, Chris Braswell. You continue to bolster... The front seven, you continue to add pass rush. I know you lost Patrick Queen, but you don't select a linebacker right now. You get a guy that can get after the rusher. And Chris Braswell is a guy that can help do so. Coming from Alabama, has great experience. Ravens love their Alabama guys. This is a position that makes sense. I feel like if they wanted to address wide receiver later on, they can do so. And you still have Zay Flowers. That's a first-round pick. He's going to continue to have a role there. At 31, the 49ers trade out. The Las Vegas Raiders trade up. They get a guy that they view as their franchise quarterback going forward. Antonio Pierce gets to make his pick. Michael Penix, a guy who has been viewed through this draft process and rumored to be aligned with the Raiders. They get him at 31. They can't make that trade with the Chiefs, a division opponent at 32. The 49ers don't really love the selections here and would rather get some mid-round selections to continue to round out and be contenders once again in the NFC. The compensation on this trade is the 49ers trade the 31st pick 
in the 135th overall pick, a fourth round selection, the 44th overall pick, the 77th overall pick, in a 2025 third round pick for their quarterback of the future. You didn't rush to get him at 13. You still addressed a different position. You move up into the first round where you know you have some picks coming up. You get your quarterback. A great competition between Gardner Minshew, Aiden O'Connell, and Michael Penix. You have depth at the position. You have solid offensive players. I'm sure you draft a running back a little bit later on. This is a great move for the Raiders. And the 49ers move back. 32 overall. The Chiefs can go a lot of different directions. In prior drafts, they've addressed the defensive side of the ball. Carl Laftis, Bolton, Trent McDuffie at the cornerback position. But A.D. Mitchell left at the wide receiver position just makes too much sense. I think this is a great value at 32 here for them. There's questions about Rasheed Rice. I know you brought in Hollywood Brown, but where Travis Kelsey's getting a little bit older and Isaiah Pacheco had a huge workload last year. Let's ease that up. Let's let Patrick Mahomes sling the ball across the yard. This gives them the opportunity to do so, selecting A.D. Mitchell Going to give you guys the 20 to 32. The Steelers select Tyler Guyton at 20. Darius Robinson for the Dolphins. The Eagles get Cooper DeGene. The Bills trade up for Brian Robinson. Troy Fatano to the Cowboys. The Packers select offensive tackle Marius Mims. The Rams get Graham Barton in the first pick that they've had in the first round since Jared Goff. The Cardinals select cornerback Enos Rakestraw. The Vikings select Jackson Powers Johnson. Lions go in the linebacker position with Edger and Cooper. The Ravens select Chris Braswell. The Raiders trade up to get their quarterback of the future in Michael Penix. And the Chiefs select A.D. Mitchell. That's going to wrap it up for my first round solo mock draft and the last since the sandbox mock draft we'll have of the season. Make sure you guys are following along with all of our draft coverage and come and join us live for the NFL draft this Thursday, sharing our reactions to the picks, going around with what we think some players that could get selected and our thoughts for those teams going forward. Follow along on our social. We we had a really nice couple episodes here in the north end of Boston. Shout out to BHW Rent right here in the harbor we got easty in the background give them a follow come enjoy a stay a great 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 experience and excited to share this with you all you guys know the deal and thank you for being part of our draft coverage draft grades are coming real soon peace love five stars nothing less let's go